Hey, this is Gary King here again. I just wanted to do a little talk here on some uh, stuff that I found that probably a lot of you don't know about, but I, I find quite interesting. Um, my old mate Sarah, she's away for a, a little while, taking a, a break. So I wanted to get this put together and put out, basically uh, for people to go and have a look at. Anybody who reads up on this, just to go and have a look at. Now, I, I kind of heard about this last year. Um, I can't remember how whether it was something I read or whatever but through uh, uh, an article or, or whatever with old Bojo the clown talking about the Commonwealth okay and creating a new basically creating new Commonwealth ties between a number of different countries so what we've got here is Kanzuk International okay now I'll put the links in the description below and this is going to be a bit of a I'm going to waffle on here a little bit because it's kind of difficult to to really follow these pages because they are somewhat disjointed when you click on links for news it takes you to the same page each time and and so on but let's just go from the beginning here CI Kanzuk International now what this is about is this is about four major countries getting together now these are the four main commonwealth the commonwealth still exists funnily enough between canada australia new zealand and the united kingdom now they put united kingdom last but i can guarantee that this is instigated out of the city of london because and also because only the buffoons in british government could come up with a name like kanzuk like they did with brexit right so I think the reason that they've they put the United Kingdom last is for a little bit of smoke and mirrors. But anyway, I'm going to put the links in for this so you can check it out yourself. One of the funny things about it is as well is that they're actually asking for money. We are 100% funded by donors just like you. In this organisation, you've got some extremely wealthy people. I don't have a problem with wealthy people, but extremely wealthy people. Let's just have a quick look at what old Boris has got to say here. So he's still listed as Prime Minister of England or Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, should I say. And um, it says, if we can do something better with Australia, Canada and New Zealand, we certainly should. Well, that's a bit condescending, isn't it? First off, if we if we can do something better with them. Oh, OK, whatever. We share very, very similar interests and a uniquely shared set of values. Well, values, I don't really think you've got an awful lot of values, any of you, to be totally honest. Any of you, right? Now, I'm just going to pull up something here. Yeah, on my uh, telegram here, my good old mum was having a look as well. She was running through it. She was just literally like, <laughs> you got to be kidding me, right? So on one of the pages, you'll have to rummage through and find it this is what it says these countries right this is what it says these four countries have positive human rights records and a shared historical and cultural bond through a democratic monarchy right are you kidding did you see the way that these governments treated people during the last two and a half years yeah i mean setting the police on them, beating people in the streets, dragging people out of houses, dragging people out of their businesses. I mean, the four probably so-called civilised but most totalitarian shenanigans that we've seen. And these four parliamentary forces want to get together. Now, again, I am personally getting a, just getting sick and tired of hearing about they're just puppets right yeah we know that but they're also very 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 dangerous individuals yeah trudeau is a dangerous individual he's not a tough guy he thinks he's a tough guy because he's been chosen he's got some power and a load of money if he didn't have any money guy wouldn't even be able to flip burgers at mcdonald's right but anyway so you've got these people you've got erin o'toole total tool member of parliament of durham canada um, just a whole bunch of characters here. 
Now, so basically, this is what they say. Kansas International was founded, blah, 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 blah. Organization promoted facilitated migration, free trade and foreign policy coordinate, coordination between Canada, Australia, New Zealand, United Kingdom. The Kansas countries. In one of these sections here, it talks about the other Commonwealth countries. So like uh, South Africa, India, uh, what do we got here? Uh, Jamaica, Pakistan, Bahamas, India. Why these countries aren't being involved or being allowed to be involved, really? And of course, it's because they could cause a problem, yeah? That's what I think, anyway. So you can read, you can read through all this stuff. It's just, just, just full of horseshit. Basically going to have four totalitarian regimes coming together to tell the public what they can and can't do. Now, the old internet's playing around here at the moment, playing about a bit. So it's difficult to go through everything here and keep pulling up the pages, but there is a part here where it says about New Zealand, the talking horse with the giant teeth, somebody else I can't stand. But anyway, after two and a half years of New Zealand being shut off from the rest of the world, they're now going to welcome all triple speared visitors from the other countries so if you haven't had the jibby jab you ain't going in not that i would want to uh, even spend any time in new zealand whatsoever so don't even go there that you know that i'm going to miss out because i'm not uh anyway <laughs> here's another little interesting page here kansas and usa so you see america's going to be involved in it as well you want your one world government guys you're going to get it Again, I'm jabbering on here a little bit. I know it's a little bit more uh, dis disorientated trying to read. I'm getting a bit more disorientated trying to read through all this and then read it to you. So, but it, anyway, this is what it says here. Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom, along with the USA, have called for Interpol to suspend Russia from its international law enforcement capabilities. International law enforcement capabilities. What do you need international law enforcement for? to control the public right this james skinner character i'm going to do a little bit of, i'm going to do some checks into some of the they got a board of directors just full up with all the kind of people you'd expect to find but they're trying to sell this kumbaya it's going to be amazing it's going to be fantastic you're going to be able to go and work there and do whatever you like and so on remember the people being locked up in um, heathrow airport paying 1700 bucks you know, having to stay there for 10 days whilst these government officials walked in and out for their uh, G7. You remember all that, don't you? So anyway, this is what it says here. The five countries which make up the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. <laughs> the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance. A comprehensive intelligence collaboration focusing on signals, military and human intelligence have requested the immediate suspension of Russia. Russia's access to the systems, said British Home Secretary Shitty Patel. This is what wonderful Patel has to say. Russia's actions are a direct threat to the safety of individuals and to international law enforcement cooperation, Patel says. I wonder how we look at all the people that have been threatened by law enforcement and by government officials over the last two and a half years. I think they need to take a look in the mirror, don't you? Obviously not going to do that, however. Eh. <laughs> Another prime candidate for the wall of shame. And they're using the, uh, they're using the whole yellow and blue flag waving nonsense as part of all this. So you can see where this is all, this all started off in 2015. Kans Kansak, <laughs> Kansak International will continue to monitor the ongoing diplomatic developments between Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom and resulting sanctions towards Russia in the coming days. Okay, so they're using the old Russian thing here. Another thing it says here, which I thought was quite interesting, it says polling shows, polling commissioned by the UK think tank has revealed that British citizens view Canada, Australia, New Zealand as the most favoured country in the world, countries in the world. Revealed this week how strong affiliations amongst British citizens for the Kansas countries, even above all neighbouring EU nations. So basically you can see where this is all going. I would imagine that there is very, very, very few people in Britain that know anything, anything at all about about this Kansak thing. 
the most favoured by the most. I mean, you've only got to read this. I mean, seriously, the only the most favourite in this poll is Australia, followed by Canada, New Zealand, Sweden, Spain. But of course, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand come top of the list. Of course, they do. But anyway, I just wanted to do a short thing about this because I really think that this is something that you should look into because these people are not doing this to help any of us. They, you will find, I think you will find that eventually pretty much these will all become prison islands. Britain for sure, Australia, New Zealand. Well, Australia is already the prison island anyway because if you think about it, apart from the migrants that went there, pretty much everybody else, apparently according to hysterical history uh, were all uh, convicts weren't they so it was a prison island in the first place once you're there are you going to be able to get out you're going to have to have all the right documentation to get in and out it's not going to be yeah fly over from england to australia no visa required it's going to be come to australia you better be triple jabbed and more you better not have any kind of slap on the wrist from the authorities and then the next thing i can see happening is they'll turn around and say Oh yeah, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you can't come because you don't fit into the right wage gap. You don't have enough money. This is a very nefarious organisation that is being put together behind closed doors, but in full view. So there, there's, there's a bunch of stuff in here. I, I read a, another little article uh, to do with defence. Kanzuk shows what international security policy should look like. Bunch of military uniforms. And this dude, Joshua Cohen. The last year has been an unprecedented time for global security. Multiple times countries have come close to the edge of conflict. Whether it's India and China in the Himalayas or America sending a carrier group through the, through the, <laughs> through the Taiwanese Straits, the world has been on a knife edge. The world is on a knife edge, sir, because you kind of people decide to put it there. We do not. Stop blowing your horn. The last year has been an unprecedented time for global security. Throw a global scandemic into the mix and a good dose of jibby jab nationalism and you've got a Pandora's box of conflicts ready to open. Can you believe the crap that comes out of these people's mouths? Throughout the crisis, Britain together with Canada, Australia and New Zealand have been dead centre of all these conflicts and have managed to navigate these hot zones without firing a single shot. That's all I really need to say about this character, isn't it? Whoever he is, we're going to find out. We're going to do some checking on this guy, right? OK, uh, I wanted to bring that up because, again, does your average Joe, your average Julie, your average family create conflict? No. The only people who create conflict in the world are these people. These people, as in this website, who are blowing their trumpets as if they're the saviour of the human race. Read up on this. These are dangerous, dangerous people who work for dangerous, dangerous people. And if you want your one world government, your one world military that will basically kick your door in just for uh, wearing the wrong colour shirt. Um, I'm sorry to say, kumbaya aside, lots of good energy and so on, these are the people that are going to do it. Oh, that's another thing that's hilarious, they've got their own merch shop, you know, with, uh, with young people on it, you know, oh isn't this great look, military decal, premium shield, Letters, Kansas wording, original shield. Yeah, look at this. They've got their own. Can even get a clock with it on it. Vintage map. <laughs> the vintage map happens to show the flat earth. <laughs> but um, so anyway, this has been a bit difficult to put together because um, basically our internet is working like a turd, <laughs> which is, I think is due to the fact that um, the company keeps switching us on and off, on and off, on and off wonderful high tech uh, all I was going to say at the end of this is you know we, we've constantly heard of one world government we keep hearing about well basically about that one world government new world order and everything uh, we know that the EU is basically the one world government for Europe or they like to think they are and of course if this is already being put out there you know it's already happening right everything that you see that they're talking about that's 
you know, plan for the future is already happening. And now we're getting these four countries trying to put themselves together without actually even asking the public if the public want to go along with it. Of course, the public will go along with it because they go along with everything, right, as we've seen. But I think it's worth looking into and having a good read through. I've just pulled up a few points, but um, I think you will find eventually over the next few years that these dangerous individuals will be conspiring against the public together, but they'll have there'll be legality to it. You know, oh, well, it's all, you know, you, 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 you all agreed to this. You all agreed to this. Trudeau can decide what Britons do and whoever's in, in Britain can decide what Canadians do and, and the horse with the giant teeth will be able to decide what Australians do and the, well, the words escape me for the Australians anyway. Um, those people there and what they've been doing they will be able to decide what uh, the Canadians do and so on and so forth. So I would have a look into it. I think it's um, it's worth taking a look at and spending some time on. I'm trying to load up some more. Uh, it's all the same people as well. You know, there's there's old Biden there. You know, he's involved in it. They're, they're all involved in it. Just have a run through, take a look through it. Uh, <laughs> Canada and UK space agencies, come on, <laughs> they're going to start. Oh, look, and they've got the, it's hilarious, the, the astronaut, the astronaut's got the, um, he's got the, uh, he's got the badge with all the flags on it and that. It's like, really? <sighs> whatever, mate, you know, whatever. What the new UK-Australia agreement means for digital trade policy. It's time to move forward with Kanzuk and end Convid restrictions. Ugh, you know. Come on. See, the US, they haven't bought the US in yet, but it ministers for Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom, together with the USA, have introduced a joint statement concerning China's actions. So you're going to have the you're going to have the biggies all together there. And that that goes for the same people. I guarantee if we look through all this, you'll be finding that most of them are part of the World Economic Forum and so on. Anyway, that's all I've got to say on this one. I hope it kind of makes sense. It is a bit garbled because uh, I was I wanted to do this and the internet is running, like I said, like a turd. Please look into this stuff. I have to say, going out in the streets waving flags and banners ain't going to do any good. You know, they're just going to laugh at you. So I think the more the word is spread, we need to build up a big global group of people that's far, far, far bigger than they are and let them know that we're not going to put up with it. How we do that, I'm not quite sure yet. But thanks for listening in. 